Hi there again everyone, this is again Alan and welcome back to my channel. Today here in the Philippines, we are now on our 10th week of the quarantine and I'm praying that you guys are all healthy and safe at home. Today we are going to be reviewing again another watercolor brand and this is very much anticipated and requested in this channel. This is no other than the pretty excellent watercolors from China. And before we start, I'd like to invite you guys to please do check out the YouTube page of my close friend Gerald Mandala who is also an architect and an artist like me. He's currently building his YouTube channel and for that he's having a watercolor set giveaway for Filipino subscribers. He's gonna give hand put paint sets of uh, Kamlin and Shinhan PWC. So for the mechanics, I'm gonna be putting the links to that at the description box. Please do check it out. And for my non-Filipino subscribers, please still do support his page because he is a great artist. He is uh, doing watercolor reviews and demonstration paintings tutorials just like me. So please support. I got my set at Shopee Philippines, particularly at the eastweststore.ph checkout for 979 Philippine pesos or roughly 19 US dollars which does not include yet my shipping fee of course. And I got it last April 29, 2020 and it arrived after 9 days. I think that's pretty quick considering that we are under quarantine in the Philippines still. Aside from Shopee Philippines, it's also available in other online shops like um, Amazon US and I'll be putting all the useful links at the description box in case you'd like to check them out. So the courier is JNT Express and now let's unwrap our package. By the way, it came very well wrapped. So here now is our set. And there is still another plastic um, wrapper. So let's first take a look at the box. In front you can find this beautiful um, parrot painting. Obviously I think it's watercolor painting. And here are some half pan samples. And it says here pretty excellent. 36 and here are some Chinese characters I believe. This means watercolor. So this pink sticker here means that I got the pink tin, just like the Paul Rubens tin. And at the back, you can find the color swatches, the 36 color swatches that are included in our selection. And on this side are some Chinese characters. And it says here it's um, Shanghai Own Owen Art Materials Co Ltd. I've seen some reviews of this brand and I've heard that the Pretty Excellent is under the same manufacturer that creates Paul Rubens watercolors but when I checked the inlay of the Paul Rubens it says here Shanghai Owen Painting Materials Co Limited while here Shanghai Owen Art Materials Co Limited so I'm not sure if that's just the same thing so the Owen here is differently spelled as compared to the Owen here. I'm not sure about the difference, but let's see. In their swatches, they provided the color names and the light fastness rating, although they did not mention any basis of the light fastness rating. They also did not provide any pigment code information. Anyway, the three stars mean absolutely permanent, the two stars mean moderately durable, and the one star is fugitive. And from the 36 colors, 17 are 2 stars and 19 are 3 stars. So now let's open our box to see our tin container. So here it is now. It looks so delicately beautiful with its pastel pink color. Though it doesn't feel very uh, sturdy as compared to the other tin containers that I've had before. So inside it comes with this information sheet that now gives the same spelling as the one they provided in Paul Ruben Rubens, Shanghai Owen Art Materials Co. Limited. So here everything is in Chinese 
except for the company name and the pretty excellent and it's really very comparable with the information sheet that they gave in Paul Rubens so I think this justifies that they're under the same company and here's a code here and there is also a swatch of 36 colors and 24 so I believe the maximum is 36 they also provided a coloring sheet which they also provided in Paul Rubens but the paper in Paul Rubens is rough, really rough, as compared to the Pretty Excellent. And I believe this is also watercolor paper, but we are not going to be coloring it now. They've also provided a water brush, which is, I think, quite small as compared to the other brushes they provided in other reviews. But anyway, it's okay because I don't actually use water brush and the set is covered by this um, I think this is plastic or acrylic sheet and just by looking at our colors we are not actually sure if these colors are equivalent to a half pan or what so let's try to uh, take out our tray of colors and see So behind, you can find the glue stick here, and I think they're filled up to the bottom. I think it's very comparable to a half pan. By the way, this is a Sennelier half pan. This looks bigger because it has a uh, thicker wall as compared to this very flimsy plastic tray. So let's take out one color. to see how oh it's glued it's weird <laughs> okay so here's one color so let's try to take out also this orange oh. so here is the Sennelier and this is the pretty excellent so I think this proves now that the pretty excellent is equivalent to half pan of the other brands So now for our swatch sheet and sample painting, we are using Arches 185 grams cold press cotton paper as usual. And for our color names, let me give you a tip. Use the color names from the swatch sheet or the watercolor sheet that they provided instead of the color names from the box because these are two different name sets. I don't know why they committed that mistake because it causes confusion actually. But when you look on the watercolors from the palette you can see that the 23rd color is too dark to be a yellow green and here the 23rd color is paints gray and next is yellow green which is actually very comparable to this one where here it's actually yellow green and a permanent green light here they don't have a paints gray but here they have a paints gray i think this is the paints gray i think this is right so let's do our swatch sheet so the first color is white by the way we are not re-wetting our pans prior to uh, painting to be fair with the other sets or brands that we have reviewed before next we have lemon yellow next we have cadmium yellow hue Next is yellow orange, which is also very vibrant and more on the opaque side. Next, we have cadmium orange hue, and this looks very comparable to yellow orange. Next is cadmium red light hue. Next is Vermilion. Vermilion looks very comparable to uh, the Cadmium Red Light Hue. 
Next, we have Scarlet Lake. Next is Crimson Lake. Next, we have Crimson Lake Deep. Next is Alizarin Crimson. I think this is warmer as compared to the two. Next, we have Permanent Rose. So I think this is the coolest red here. Next, we have Purple Lake. I am amazed how the paints re-wet so instantly. And which is also com very comparable to the Paul Rubens. Next is Mauve. This looks like a bright violet. Next is the Yoxazine Violet. This is nice. And this is very far from how deep other Dioxazine Violets perform. Although I prefer, you know, a Dioxazine Violet to be just like this because it's easier to handle. Next is Verditer or Verditer Blue. Sorry, I don't know the proper pronunciation. This is a perfect um, sky color, I think. Next is Cerulean Blue Hue. So this is hue, just like the cadmiums. So that means they used an alternative pigment and some paint manufacturers do that to make their paints less expensive or also to avoid some toxic pigments but here I think they want to make it cheaper so they use alternative pigments I think this is PB15 is to 3 or thalo blue Next is Intense Blue. So this is another Thalo Blue, I think, and this time I think they used PB15 is to 6. Another shade of Thalo Cyanine Blue. Or Thalo Cyanine Blue Red Shade. So this is the green shade, this is the red shade. Next is Cobalt Blue. Let's move our sheet a bit. Okay, so this is cobalt blue and I think this is a hue they did not tell it's hue but I just feel it's a hue I think it's a mixture of white and French ultramarine but still I'm not sure because it doesn't feel as thick or as you know as opaque as the real cobalt blue it feels a bit warm for cobalt blue next we have ultramarine and this is a beautiful ultramarine because it's so vibrant next is sorry for the lighting next is turkey blue I think this is very comparable to the Peacock Blue from other Asian uh, made paints. Next is Russian Blue. The blues are transparent. Next we have Paints Grey. Next we have Yellow Green. I don't know why they had to put the paints gray here then suddenly the next color is green <laughs> next we have sap green next is hooker's green light
next is Hooker's Green Deep. Next is Viridian Hue. So this is U. That is not PG-18, so that's PG-7. And I'm really appreciating the uh, proper naming, the honesty. Next is Olive Green. This is a beautiful muted green. Now we go to the Earth Colors. This is Yellow Ochre. Next is Raw Sienna. As you can see from the pans, they look very deep. You can't actually identify which color it is. So you'll just see the color once you swatch them. So I think making a swatch sheet that is the same arrangement as the one they did in the palette will be very helpful in identifying your colors. Next is Burnt Sienna. Next is Burnt Umber. Next we have Van Dyke Brown. Next is Sepia. These browns look good, but these three, they look very much the same. And uh, yeah. I think a sepia and a Van Dyke brown should be deeper than this. And lastly, we have Lamp Black. So now our swatch sheet is dry, we can now have a closer look. I am happy with the intensity of the colors. They're very vibrant and they're easy to rivet. And most of them are transparent, so it's a plus point for me. But I have some questions about the color selection because when we uh, categorize the colors, we can see that there are seven reds, seven blues, six greens, six earths, three purples, two oranges, and two yellows. Um, I think for a 36 color set, there should be at least 3 yellows. There are 6 greens, 6 earths, 7 blues, and 7 reds. Why did they only provide just 2 yellows? Yellow is a primary color, therefore I think it is very important. I can see that they provided here yellow ochre and yellow green and uh, 2 oranges. Maybe. These are the reasons why they provided only two yellows, but I really think for the number of the other colors, they provided they should have provided more yellows, at least three, to balance the selection. And also I've noticed that there is no granulation at all from their colors. Even the ultramarine is very fine. The earths didn't have any granulation at all. So for those artists who do not like granulation, I think this is a good set for you. The colors are very uniform when it comes to texture. They're very transparent. So um, these are some points that you should take note if you consider getting your pretty excellent watercolors. So now it's time for our sample painting and I'm gonna be speeding this up to save time. So if you have any questions, just comment it below and I'll be answering you as soon as I can.
this time I saw the granulation in our sky because here I used cobalt blue so the granulation here confirms that their cobalt blue is made out of ultramarine because there is granulation and also I used paints gray and uh, mixed with cobalt blue for our sky and I really think the colors move really well especially when you put enough water and um, for that I'm very happy now we have come to our favorite part the comparison portion and let's begin with the set of paints that are I think less performing as compared to the pretty excellent watercolors so let's begin with these three Symbolion watercolors Best Buy and Dong A these three are less vibrant less pigmented and are very chalky as compared to the pretty excellent next we have Reeves watercolors Faber Castell solid watercolors and Sakura Koi Pocket Field sketch box the edge of pretty excellent is the clean texture the very even and smooth dispersion next we have the Windsor Newton China version um, I think uh, the edge of the Windsor Newton China are the pigment coats they provided but the intensity and the texture is much better in pretty excellent so I'm giving the point to the pretty excellent next are these three uh, Mary's watercolor Prang 2019 and Prang 2007 all of these four sets dispersed very well and they are all vibrant but um, when it comes to the intensity of colors I think the edge still goes to the pretty excellent but they are really really close next are these four Mary's watercolors in tubes Pentel watercolors in tubes also Faber Castell in tubes and Pebeo Studio watercolors also in tubes um, the all of these are very vibrant colors they are not bad they're all great student grade paints but the edge of pretty excellent is the cleanliness and the dispersion they're very smooth and I commend this watercolor set for that and that is the edge of this paint over these sets so if I had to choose one that is very close to the performance of the pretty excellent watercolors that would be I think the superior watercolor I think they're really comparable although some of the colors in superior are more vibrant and intense like the orange and the mauve as compared to the mauve here or the dioxygen violet here the dispersion is very very similar or actually if I still really had to choose I think I'd choose pretty excellent over the superior because um, as you can see here the alizarin crimson and mauve stopped at a certain point but I am not really sure maybe that's just a, you know um, human error or just my hands but yeah they're really comparable now of course let's go to the set of paints that are I think better than the pretty excellent of course uh, the Kokuyo Kamlin watercolors the masters watercolors from Maris I have not corrected this yet and the uh, Van Gogh watercolors which is I think still the best student grade paints and also Sonnet watercolors um, they're very comparable but the Sonnet provided pigment code and um, I think they have you know more appeal because of the characters of the colors next is Lucas Aquarel 1862 which is I think very creamy next we have Windsor Newton Cotman which is very dependable and transparent also Next is Prima Marketing Tropicals. Um, I just love how intense the Prima Marketing colors are, and uh, they also provide provided pigment coats. Next is Holbein Artists Watercolors. I think no explanation is needed there. Uh, A Galio Honey Watercolors from Italy. These are handmade paints, and they're very natural, and I love them. Also the Mission Gold and uh, White Knights. They're both transparent, but you can see the character is much more evident in White Knights. And if you will look closely, the colors are more intense still, especially on the more concentrated parts. And of course, uh, Windsor Newton Professional. And of course, we're not gonna miss comparing the pretty excellent watercolor set with its artist grade sister 
which is no other than the Paul Rubens watercolors. Um, overall, they're very much comparable. Both of them are vibrant and they move really well. And they actually have the same texture. At first, they're thick, but when they're dry, they're very transparent and they're they're very thin. But the obvious edge of the Paul Rubens watercolors is that they provided pigment codes and they used real pigments like yeah the cadmium yellow they use real cadmium also the cobalt they use the real cobalt pigment here and also the sky blue they use pb36 which is a real um, cerulean blue pigment and also the the colors especially the earth colors have you know stronger characters in my opinion and um, i think that really matters that really gives you confidence when uh, the manufacturer provides uh, the pigment codes aside from the fact that they're very good let me know in the comment section if you want me to make a separate video comparison of the pretty excellent watercolors and the paul rubens watercolors i'm gonna be doing that soon if you want me to so if you are gonna ask me would i recommend the pretty excellent watercolors my answer is a definite yes if you are a beginner if you are a budding artist i think this set is great for you you have more than enough colors to begin with and you can actually uh, choose the 24 color set i think it will be enough for you to start if you are already an established artist and would like to have a set for fun or for sketchbook or for practicing this is also great but if you are doing commissions you can also risk on trusting their light fastness rating but if you are to ask me i will not do so because there is no clear basis on that they did not provide pigment code also so i won't um, you know risk my name or my my work for my clients because i am very afraid of uh, fading artworks so but that's just me if you're gonna ask me this paint overall is really great they're very vibrant they move really well they disperse really well and the colors are very uniform some artists like me love granulation this set doesn't have strong granulation they actually don't have very noticeable granulation so if that is a thing for you then you should take note of that i'm really happy with the with the performance of the pretty excellent watercolors in our sample painting because it really uh, moved really well and the paints gray was phenomenal for the sky it's my first time to uh, use paints gray um, with verditer blue and um, cobalt blue and i think it's really great for this uh, sky if i forgot any detail just ask me anything at the comment box i love to hear your comments your suggestions or anything shout out or whatever or suggestions just comment it below and i'll be responding as soon as i can if you are not subscribed yet, please do subscribe and please don't forget to like and share this video. So I think we're done. Again, thank you very much and see you next week.